Welcome to the Good News Flower Hour, people. I'm your host, Dave Easy. The big news this week was the passage of the $789 bazillion economic stimulus package, which only came about when Republicans in Congress finally stopped their obstructionist grandstanding. No, no, no and took a long, hard look at polling numbers that show an overwhelming number of Americans want them to shut the fuck up and sit down. The latest version of the stimulus package calls for all $789 billion to be given to this homeless woman to do with as she sees fit, along with a kiss on the cheek from the Commander-in-Chief. Having killed more people than Charles Manson, the nationwide peanut-borne salmonella outbreak became the subject of a Congressional Oversight Committee hearing this week. Stuart Parnell, owner of the Peanut Corporation, identified by the Food and Drug Administration as the source of the outbreak, refused to answer the Congressional Subcommittee's questions Wednesday, repeatedly invoking his Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate himself. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, on the advice of my counsel, I respectfully decline to answer your question based on the protection afforded me under the United States Constitution. This angered the subcommittee, which then released internal company memos showing that Parnell damn well knew that batches of peanut product were tainted with salmonella and insisted that they be shipped off to consumers anyway. At one point, Representative Greg Walden, Republican from Oregon, held up a gallon bucket of the recalled peanut butter wrapped in yellow crime scene tape and asked Parnell if he'd be willing to, quote, take the lid off and eat any of it. Do you of you be willing to take the lid off and eat any of these products now? Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, on the advice of my counsel, I respectfully decline to answer your question based on the protection afforded me under the United States Constitution. The death toll from the apocalyptic brush fires that swept across the Australian outback this week is expected to exceed 200 as investigators continue to find charred human remains amid the far-flung rural outposts devastated by the fires, some of which were set by arsonists, according to authorities. The CEOs of eight major banks, all on the verge of insolvency, went before Congress this week to receive their obligatory pre-bailout slap on the dick before getting back on their corporate jets with sore peepees and billions and billions in taxpayer money in their pockets. I cannot believe no one's prosecuted you on this. But then again, we've had no prosecutorial action whatsoever the last administration, and the new administration has a little time to figure this out. Outraged by the hypocrisy of American pot laws and the cowardice of corporate sponsors, the coalition of stoners announced a boycott against Kellogg's after the cereal giant severed ties with Olympian Michael Phelps when a photo surfaced of the eight-time gold medal winner huffing a bomb. It is widely believed that the fluffy, toasted goodness of brown sugar cinnamon Pop-Tarts will be sorely missed during the second side of Dark Side of the Moon. The lunatic is on the grass Remembering games and daisy chains and laughs Got to keep the lunas on the path Baseball golden boy Alex Rodriguez, a.k.a. A-Rod, admitted this week that he's been eating steroids like candy for years which has enabled him to both knock the ball out of the park and fuck the living shit out of Madonna. This week, Abraham Lincoln and Charles Darwin both turned 200 years old. Asked to explain their longevity, Darwin chalked it up to natural selection, while Lincoln said that freeing the slaves keeps him young at heart. And that is the week that was. The Good News Flower Hour was brought to you by the word Octomom. Just go out and do it, people.